What's up you guys, I'm John Turner. Welcome back to Woods the Table. Hopefully you guys saw the last video where we showed you how to make uh, and set a trot line if you want to catch turtles. Um, and we caught a nice size snapping turtle at our local uh, farm pond out of our hunt which club, is which is under here. Um, and we're going to show you how to clean that turtle uh, and get it ready to cook in this video. Um, so if you're a little bit squeamish about this, go ahead and click off of it. Um, we've already dispatched uh, the turtle, so we went ahead and did the very messy bits and kind of um, removing the things that need to be removed in order to make it safe to handle and get it ready to clean. Um, so we'll take this uh, uh, pan away and get started on the actual cleaning process. Now I want to warn you before you get into this, it's this is the first time that I've done this, um, but I can already tell you this is not for the, the squeamish or the faint at heart. Um, this animal, you know, being a reptile, um, it, it's even when you remove uh, all the, the vital bits, the central nervous system still seems to respond to touch. It still moves a little bit. It's honestly, it's kind of freaky. <laughs> I can be honest with it's you. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Um, leave that down for a second. Mm -hmm. It's really weird because it's still trying to move around. I can only imagine it's going to be really difficult to clean. So what I'm going to show you is kind of an aggregation of some of the best methods that I've seen in YouTube videos and articles online and in some uh, clever suggestions in the comments. And um, so we'll jump right into it. But I do want to make mention of the fact that, you know, one, these are delicious to eat. Um, and so we're going to show you some really cool recipes, but we didn't still just... Still grabbing the cup, it's delicious. That's right. We're, we're going to cook it so it's delicious. But you don't catch these and harvest them for no reason. We have a major, major predation problem in our pond. Um, they have decimated, together with the otter population out there, they have decimated our fish population. And they eat everything. They basically don't have any uh, natural predators in our area. And so we've got to try to even the odds a little bit and kind of balance that ecosystem. Um, so we were able to catch one of these guys. We're going to show you how to clean it up. And, uh, and fix it into a great, great meal. All right. <laughs> yep. Okay. So for the first step, we've um, gone ahead and removed the head and um, the feet and the claws. So now it's obviously safe to handle I've seen a lot of different you know recommendations for how to do this online where people have you know jammed a hose pipe in here and filled it up I'm not gonna do that this time around maybe we'll try that with a future um, you know in a future video or something because I don't want this meat to turn out waterlogged I don't know if it will leave me a message in the comments and tell me how to avoid that um, we're gonna try it this way and so the first thing that we're gonna want to do is remove this breastplate <laughs> okay so the very very first uh, thing that you're going to want to make sure that you do is sharpen your knives. Um, you're going to want a really strong knife and then a flexible fillet knife. Okay. So to start out, we're going to want to just basically follow this outline around and remove, um, you just basically cut this skin and free up this breastplate and then we'll cut along this line to remove the top part of the shell from the breastplate itself. Okay, you're right. It is moving it's now. So weird. I know. I'll try the other knife for this part. That While you're watching this, just be aware. I mean, the turtle has not been with us for you know, several hours at this point, the turtle can't feel any of this. Um, it's just, again, just the central nervous system just continuing to respond and do what it does. Oh. Now, I did see a, a comment online that was really, really helpful, which mentioned, which I can't do right now because I'm not doing this on like a wood table. Um, but if we were at the hunt camp right now, you could run a couple of nails up through the bottom of the table and then jam the turtle shell down on top of that. And that would keep it from spinning on you when you're trying to clean it. It's actually a pretty good idea. It's a great idea. Mm. 
All right, I've got most of this part cut loose, it looks like. We'll just continue on around the front here. Now this is where it helps to really have a flexible knife. You can keep these legs out of the way. Um, to just let this knife, see how it flexes and just follows the inside of the shell down? Try to cut some of this loose from the top of the shell. Okay, so now we're just gonna take this stronger knife and just follow kind of this vein right here along the top part, just to remove the breastplate. That looks hard. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit surprised. That's probably the easiest thing I've done so far. <laughs> there we go. Dad. Yes, sir. Why do people call a turtle shell a turtle shell? Well, because it's a shell. It's a shell attached to a turtle. Uh -huh. I'll try to follow this vein. It's okay. harder than we got with the other one. Yes, it is. All right, so we're just going to put this knife in, and as close as we can to this breastplate, go ahead and cut all the meat and everything free. So you can like easily get it? Huh? So you can like easily get the meat? That's right. Have you ever taken a class in turtle anatomy? No. When you're at home right now doing homeschool, I think this is probably a good way to learn it. Mm -hmm. Well, it comes off the shell pretty clean. It comes off really clean, pretty easy. I remember you saying that uh, if you like leave him, the meat will like clean, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly correct. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. I'll do the best I can. Okay. I did not know right under that that there's its its stuff. <laughs> okay. So there is the breastplate removed. Okay? Okay. okay. Just for a few minutes. So this really hasn't been too bad so far, to be perfectly honest. I expected that breastplate to be harder to get off. So now um, we're going to start the process of just skinning the rest of the turtle and then quarter him out. And hopefully, I don't make too much of a mess of this, but look like I kind of already have when removing that breastplate. Um, I'm going to see if I can get to the tender ones underneath it. So this is the part I'm sure is probably more uh, is a little bit easier if you do fill them up with water um, but basically I'm just gonna start um, you know one skinning around uh, the legs front and back and then continue the work of just following this meat down inside the, the upper part of the shell Not gonna lie, this would be easier if he would sit still. Now this isn't like the hog where there's glands you have to get out. I haven't seen anything about that online. So if somebody wants to drop me a note and tell me about something that I'm getting ready. So these things right here, um, obviously, you know, so there's all kinds of little pieces of fat and that looks like a gland or something. We'll remove that. We'll clean all this up before we cook it. We'll clean all this up, but that looks like a front quarter. 
right there. Okay, the back side of it, where it was connected to the bottom side, the breastplate is a little bit messy and we'll clean all this off. But that looks like a piece of skin that I need to get. A good looking front quarter. Set that over there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. The front one came off a whole bunch easier um, when I didn't have the camera ro rolling. But the front piece came off a lot easier um, just by kind of grabbing the front part of the skin and then flexing the knife down and taking that whole piece of skin off in one motion. And it just, it just did a much better job of not destroying that meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish kind of gutting this turtle and getting all the entrails out of the way, but I did want to show you, here is um, the tenderloin that lays up underneath all of this. And as you start to clear this out of the way, you'll be able to get access to it and just follow this down with your fillet knife um, all the way down towards the hind quarters. And you'll be able to remove that tenderloin on both sides. It's still moving. Yeah, it's still moving. Yep. It's still moving a little bit. Yeah. Why is it moving though? Stop, watch it. out. There's a knife right there. I don't okay. Why Tenderloin don't number one. I want to touch it Daddy, can you mount turtles? Well, I don't know. I'm sure you can mount most anything. anything. Um, but what we can do is we'll clean all this out, all this meat off the underside of the shell. And then um, you can polish them up and you can keep that shell kind of as a trophy in your in your room um, with your deer heads and everything else. Kind of cool, huh? All right, so we've um, finished removing the tenderloins, uh, the front quarters, and the neck. And now we're just gonna continue the same process we did on the front quarters, on the high quarters, skin those out, um, quarter them out, and then, um, I don't know, we may not we may not include it in the video, but we'll go ahead and clean the shell out and polish it up and give it to Ryan for a trophy and keep in his room. And if these things are as good as people say, um, I hope they really are. Uh, this really wasn't a bad process. I wouldn't mind doing this again. It hasn't been too difficult. If you can get past the kind of the eerie part of it, kind of continuing to move and everything, um, it's really not that hard compared to some of the large game animals that we've skinned and processed ourselves before. This isn't too bad. Yeah, not a big deal. So we'll go ahead and just um, skin this guy out. Keep your knives sharp as you go through this process because um, the sharper they are, the easier the skin comes off. Actually, this uh, might be uh, one of the big animals on our list. <laughs> on our list? Uh -huh. Think so? Yeah, because he was huge. He's huge. I'm gonna follow with this flexible knife. I'm gonna continue to follow down underneath this quarter, inside the shell. As I come around. I got to take a bath. You got to take a bath. Do, 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 do. All the way to the back. And then, see as he's moving, so he continues to draw that leg up. It makes it really difficult just to clear the skin away from the end of this leg joint. Oh. Watch out, Ray. Okay. My well, knife's not as sharp as it was, even though I continue to try to sharpen it. Mm. Okay, so now we've got it free of kind of where the it joined to the foot down here, and now it's going to be a lot easier just to get in here and finish skinning it if I could hold it still.
Alright, so this rear quarter turned out more of a drumstick than anything. So I'm sure we'll put it to good use. <laughs> what you got, pal? A caterpillar. We find many of them on the tree over there. We find many of them. <laughs> it's our caterpillar tree, huh? Yep. When does it stop moving? Is it still oh, moving in here? No. Is it still moving when I eat it? Is it's my I, main I question. Know. It's, it's, it's freaking me out. It's like, weird. It's moving in the pan over here. That is just a little much. All right, so for everybody out there in YouTube land, Drop me a comment and tell me when this thing is gonna quit moving. Like, is it gonna quit moving after I cook it? It's is freaking, it gonna be moving around? It's freaking us out. It's scaring me to death. <laughs> I mean... What do you think, Neil? Okay, so there's a ball joint in there where this back hip connects um, that would have been a lot easier. Instead of me trying to cut through the bone up here, if you hit this um, hip socket back here and just break it loose with your knife, it would have come right free. So we'll remove this last piece of skin and... We'll clean this up before we cook it, but that is the last of the meat that we're gonna take out of this thing. So we got right much. This is not a huge snapping turtle. Um, there is more meat that could have been salvaged, I'm sure, by somebody who's more skilled in this process. But um, for having done it the first time, uh, this is actually remarkably easy. I, from all that I'd heard, um, this was gonna be really, really difficult. It really was not. Um, you do have to keep them in that bucket, as we showed you guys before, and feed them some cabbage and keep them you know, in fresh water for a few days just to clean them out. That's frankly the more arduous part of this process. The clean is really not a big deal. Um, we'll get more skilled at this as we go forward. I definitely want to do this again, um, provided that this meal turns out well. Anytime you harvest something, you absolutely want to try to use every piece and part of it that you can. Um, we'll salvage as much meat out of each animal that we harvest as we can. And um, we're going to get into the kitchen, show you guys how to cook this up. So look for the link to the next video.